Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage View Lab. And today we're taking a look at the brand new Samsung SSD 980. So this is the 980. Yeah, not... it's Gen 4, obviously. No, it is not. It's Gen 3. Quit Sadly lying to is. the people. But it's 980. It's not Evo. It's not Evo Plus. It's not Pro. It's not QVO. It's nothing. It's just 980. Yes, it could not be more clear than that. I think I just made it unclear. Yes. Okay. Well, Samsung did that to us, but this came out, uh, just launched today, comes in a 250 gig, 500 gig and terabyte uh, capacity with the pitch really being value oriented computing, mainstream users, and they've done the cost optimization largely by removing DRAM. Yes, although usually cost friendly meant Evo, but... Right, but no, this is not the 980 Evo. This is the 980. Stop confusing the issue, sir. Anyhow. We, uh, we took a look at the drives, we did a review, and in fact, we had to f break out something we haven't had to open in a while. This is the Naughty Box, where bad SSDs go. And inside the Naughty Box are currently both of our 980 samples. So they, uh, we got the 500 gig and the terabyte. They're single-sided, which is nice, which means they'll go into Ultrabooks and all those uh, tight places just fine. But almost everything is single-sided except high capacity. Super high, yeah, the eight terabyte guys, and some of the fours, I guess, are, are doubled up. Uh, but it is NVMe, it is PCIe Gen 3, as Kevin points out. Uh, so another sort of in-between holdover kind of drive, and really going after those mainstream use cases that are value-centric. But the problem is that there are a lot of drives in that category, and a lot of very good drives, including some of the previous Samsung drives. Yes, which makes this review a little bit uncomfortable, or it's really uncomfortable in any review where the prior generation uh, products not just perform better, but just dominate compared to what a new, uh, re newly released product does. Yeah, and Samsung talks a little bit about uh, DuraWrite 2 and some of the, the tricks and, and um, not really gimmicks, but some of the things they do in the drive to try to make it better, to try yeah. to get more out of that. Yeah, one build. part was bringing in host side resources, but it depends on a driver. In a lot of our areas, we test Linux or we're testing in VMware, and really you want the drive to be held up by its own merits, not by caching. I mean, caching makes it easy for any product to do well, right? but that doesn't mean the underlying product is good. No, um, it doesn't, but you will still see, surely, this drive go into a lot of value system because of the Samsung name, five-year warranty, and of course the Samsung Magician, which regardless of this drive still remains uh, as a fantastic software package. So you've got a lot of things going for it, if you just want a low-cost flash drive that will be around or should be warrantied anyway for five years. Yes, although cost is also another problem with the drive where it's, uh, well, I mean, launch pricing is always a little bit higher than uh, normal, but uh, this drive is kind of leveraged in that positioning where you'd, you'd think it was maybe a Gen 4 product or a mid-tier Gen 3 product, but it's, it's not. All right, well, let's get into what it is then, and it is the 980, and as we take a look at the, the high-level specs, like I said, comes in capacities up to terabyte with, um, despite the spec sheet claims, the actual performance are quite dramatically different, but at the top end, uh, 3,500 megabytes a second, basically going after that saturation number for the Gen 3 interface. Um, Five-year warranty, of course. Uh, Decent endurance, anything else stand out to you? Well, we we always like asking Samsung what controllers they're using, and we get the most generic replies back. Yes, it's, in fact, this time they flat out refused to answer. So they said it's an in-house controller, which we knew, and in-house NAND, which we know, but they've since, um, they used to be very proud of their controller technology, and now it's less so. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was always a good thing to know that uh, when you're buying a Samsung product, it's highly... It's highly integrated. You're buying Samsung DRAM, Samsung NAND, Samsung controller, controller. Th the PCB, everything, where not all vendors can do that. And a lot of vendors, in fact, don't own anything outside the software IP and maybe the, the PCB itself. If that. I mean, yeah. a lot of the guys that are putting out SSDs, especially in some of the gaming category some of the other spots they're just loaning their name to a pcb design oh, yeah not every vendor has multi-billion dollar fabs behind them that's where <laughs> who doesn't yes <laughs> anyway so let's take uh let's take a look then too at the rest of the the performance numbers that we get into now before we get into this first chart let's go ahead and take a look here we want to disclaim that we had to remove 
a terrible drive from this chart because it was screwing up the lines for everybody else. So the uh, the crucial P2 has been removed. Um, rest assured though, there will be more worst drive potential here. Um, so you charted the 500 gig and the terabyte, the red line and the darker blue line. Uh, pretty big difference out of the gate between the two. Yeah, we usually see big. Uh, we usually see differences between different capacity variants. In this case, I mean the 500 gig model does take a huge walloping. It's, I mean, yes, the one terabyte drive is kind of uh, f maybe front lower part of the uh, pack comes in with uh, lower latency at the onset, but in other areas it just starts to fall apart. Yeah, and at the high end, you see the uh, the Hynix P31 uh, and the uh, Sabrent kind of reach out to the end there and, and have pretty composed lines. Yeah. All right, what's next? Oh, so, dear Lord. So sequential. This is, okay, before you carry on, this is exactly why the Naughty Box came out today, is for these two drives, and these two drives exclusively, although the P2 could sit right in there too. Yeah, there. well, the P2, in uh, I think when that was launched... Um, Crucial had it as a, I think they said it was QLC, then it wasn't, then it was right. more of like NAND doesn't matter for that the drive. The progression from the P1, which was their QLC drive. Yeah, but it's kind of like it's a grab bag of you get capacity, but you're not really buying a performance, so be glad it works. Yeah. This, though, it's a, it should offer emerging performance. It should be setting, not let's say records, but it should show a good progression of the Samsung lineage. And in this case, it just, I mean, we're looking at drives that are a little bit around 200 megabytes per second for sequential write. That's bad. To, to be fair, that's only if you have to write to the drive. True. Okay, what's next? Please, no more writes. So on random 4K read, this is another area where the 500 gig sample starts to fall off at 200,000 IOPS. The, um, uh, the one terabyte comes in a little bit, uh, probably 375,000 IOPS on the peak, but uh, they start to taper off pretty quickly from the pack. And the one leading the pack in this case? Uh, that is the uh, 970 Pro, right. which it's the prior generation. And yes, it's the Pro drive. And, but, and it's also beat by the 970 Evo. Yeah. And and the Hynix. Oh, gosh. Yeah, this is painful to watch. Yeah. it's So it's a painful discussion because you're seeing drives that uh, at launch, these other drives are price comparable so since they've been out a little while right? yeah why buy the new drive when you're going to get not as great performance excellent question carry on then and then random right i told you not to do any more right charts this yeah this it's it's pretty unfortunate uh now to be fair and just to make sure i understand these charts there's a great line in caddyshack where they ask the chevy chase cat character how he measures himself against other golfers and he says by height I mean, if we take a look at this chart, clearly the 500 gig 980 is the tallest. <laughs> it It is, but sadly, that does not mean it's a better drive in this category. It's the longest line that matters. <laughs> okay, so again, we see, you know, as we've gotten used to seeing the 970 Pro stretch out there, the Evo out and, there. Yeah, and what's important is uh, the Evo, um, the Evo Plus came in after the uh, Evo, and uh, one thing that was kind of quirky with that drive is it performed incredibly well when it was launched and it actually was able to go head to head or in certain cases surpass what the 970 Pro offered. And we got used to uh, seeing the value Samsung drives dominate, like even against other uh, prosumer drives. And now we're left with the comparison where you're looking at what uh, a seventh of the performance or sixth of the performance of uh, the prior gen models. All right, please tell me this is over. No. So SQL Server, this is our test dev environment. Uh, the 500 gig drive is sadly too small for the uh, test and we probably would not even want to chart the line. But the important thing to note here is um, look at the top, uh, look at the two top line. Right, now for me it's a bit of a distance, but it looks like the Evo Plus <laughs> and Evo Plus yes. 970. So the one terabyte and two terabyte uh, Evo Plus both maxed out this test at one millisecond. Okay, so 980's replacement for some of the Evo, so it should be right around there. Uh, I don't it, see it. Yeah, so I mean, if you go a little bit down at three millisecond, you see the 970 Pro, uh, and actually the uh, the the uh, Evo Plus drives did outpace the uh, 980 Pro. But if you go all the way down to the bottom and realize the, uh, why we had to change the scale on our chart, we see the 981 terabyte at 99 milliseconds. And that's a new high score or low score? 
or high low score. So sadly, it's not a uh, it's not a new high score. No, We've seen good. much worse drives in this test, but it's it's a fairly difficult test for certain products to handle because you go outside of the boundaries of um, the how the DRAM is the problem, right? Well, actually, I think we have seen some drives in this that performed well without DRAM, but. Dropping DRAM, a lot of vendors would want to say, well, we can you can still keep it high performance by dropping it, but we've never actually seen a high performant non DRAM product. <laughs> so there, there you have it. Um, the 980 is confusing in its placement, its spec, its build, confusing in its components because Samsung doesn't want to talk about what those are, and confusing in the performance, just price. I mean, price, yeah. Um, Magician Tool is cool, though, so there's some upside there. And one day these will be on sale for you know, 50 Hopefully. bucks or something for the terabyte. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a uh, server boot drive or something, I mean, if they're very cost competitive, they'll work well. But now we're coming out to, like right now, this would have been a perfect sample for uh, Samsung to use a, Q, uh, a QLC-based uh, for their M.2. NVMe. But... We're seeing performance levels that's are actually a little bit lower than, well, a lot lower than uh, a QLC drive, especially in our SQL Server test. All right, make it stop. So what we're going to do is we're going to place these two drives back in the naughty box. Find are we the P2s that. It? Yeah, well, no, we're just we're going to put the lid back on. We're going to close it. Well, I'm going to tuck it in somewhere nice and tight and safe where it can't hurt anyone else in our For lab. another 16 years until it comes out and starts making a ton of noises. Something like that. <laughs> Thanks for tuning into the video.